Hi, I'm Alistair, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create custom printed circuit boards for your electronic puzzles. So, in the past on this channel I've um, shown various videos about how to make little electronic puzzles with Arduinos, and um, a lot of the time I show how to create them on breadboards like this. So, um, breadboards are a really simple way of uh, laying out your components and testing your design and you kind of plug the components in and pull them out and it's really simple uh, to do, but they're not very robust. And if you were running an escape room or something like that and you had an Arduino powered puzzle, you probably wouldn't want it to be on a breadboard. Uh, so instead, this is a much better idea. This is exactly the same puzzle, um, but has been printed onto a custom uh, circuit board and it fits exactly onto uh, an Arduino Uno like that, like a shield. Uh, it's very durable, it's very robust, um, so it's much less likely to break. Uh, and to do this, uh, I'm going to use an example of one puzzle I've done in the past. Uh, so this is a, a puzzle which I've called a cover-up puzzle. Um, it features a voltage divider created from a resistor, a fixed resistor, and a light-dependent resistor. And as you place your hand over the LDR, um, a analog signal is read from the midpoint between the fixed and the variable resistor, and the uh, resistance will increase or decrease. Um, when it is covered up by a certain amount, the puzzle unlocks and, and something happens. So I've chosen this puzzle because it is a real life uh, puzzle I've done in the past. It's nice and simple because it's only got the two uh, basic components on there, but you could use this same approach uh, for pretty much any electronic components. And I'm going to be using a piece of software called Fritzing to do this, um, which is what I've used in the past to show you my circuit layouts anyway. Uh, and it's downloadable for free um, from the internet. Okay, so when you first load up Fritzing, you'll start on the uh, welcome screen like this. And notice that there's uh, other tabs across the top here as well. You've got breadboard, schematic, PCB and code. And the point of these tabs is that they represent uh, different views of your project. They sort of show the same thing, but in different ways. So breadboard, um, this is uh, where you lay out your components with a nice sort of graphical thing as if you were um, laying them out on a breadboard like this. Schematic is more for a um, diagram, an electronic circuit diagram. PCB is when you want to lay out the components to print them onto a printed circuit board, which is what we're going to be doing in this example. And then the code tab lets you uh, add the code that's actually running on a processor, much like the Arduino IDE does or something like that. And um, you can kind of you can only use one of those tabs if you want. So let's say you wanted to just create a schematic of a project you were doing, you could only use the schematic tab if you wanted to and add components and wire them up in that. Um, or you could only use the breadboard tab if you wanted to make like a nice um, image to include in the book. But it's a good idea. I think it's best practice really to to try to use them and to keep them in sync as you add items. Um, kind of add one at a time onto a view and then sort of flick to the other views and just make sure that they're um, keeping in sync with each other uh, because otherwise if you kind of create this beautifully uh, constructed breadboard image uh, in isolation and then try to look at the schematic for it what you'll find is it's kind of all over the place um, anyway so uh, we'll start with the breadboard view because I think that's the the nicest one to use if you're kind of if you're visually minded like me um, and this is going to be a project for an Arduino Uno so the first thing we're going to do is add uh, an UNO to the project. So I'll click on the UNO parts bin here. Uh, we'll find an UNO board and I'll drag that into the breadboard image like that. And I'll just reposition it up there a little bit. Okay. Um, and now the, um, so if I now flick to the schematic view, you'll see that I now have a, a schematic image here of an Arduino. Uh, on the PCB view, I now have the outline of the pinout. Um, on an Arduino and the code is still empty because I've not typed any code yet. Um, so let's add some new components. So for this uh, project I'm going to need a resistor. Now a resistor is a core component. Um, the core bin includes things like resistors, capacitors, LEDs, switches, things like that. So I'm going to take a resistor and drag it onto the breadboard about there. Let go. And then in the properties inspector down here, I'm just going to set that to be a uh, 10 kilo ohm resistor. And you'll see that the coloured bands on the image there um, changes to reflect the coloured um, 
to, uh, to reflect the resistor value, which is kind of handy, so you don't need to remember what the coloured stripes are on a resistor. It'll do it for you automatically. Um, okay, and then I'm also going to add a light dependent resistor or a photo cell. So I'm going to come and drag that down onto the breadboard as well. And there we go. And you'll see that these green rows here have lit up on the breadboard to show that they are connected. Um, obviously, these are wired underneath the breadboard. So what I want to do is to create a voltage divider. So the left-hand side of that resistor, I'm going to drag up to the 5-volt pin. And I'm just going to right-click on that and colour it red just to show that that's a positive uh, voltage coming in on that side there. It's going to go across the resistor. Uh, across to the far end of the um, LDR and that is going to be connected to ground so I'll drag another wire there and color that one black and then what we're going to do is we're going to measure the voltage um, at halfway between these two components to see how much has been split between the fixed resistor and the variable resistor so we're going to measure that on an analog pin so I'll just connect A0 to there and we'll color that wire uh, yellow let's say. So um, that's all my um, components connected on the breadboard view. Um, if you want to you can um, you know bend these wires, you can um, add sort of nice splines and make them look a bit more like they're actually sort of um, jumper pins connected and things like that. But that's purely aesthetic, it won't make any difference. Um, that's just to sort of make it look nice on the breadboard view. So now if we look at what's happened to the other view, so if we now jump to the schematic view what you'll see is that it's placed, uh, each of the components that I added in breadboard view have been placed in schematic view as well, um, but uh, they haven't been kind of properly laid out because obviously it doesn't know how to lay them out. But what it's done is it's inserted these dotted lines um, just to show that there is a connection between those components because we defined a connection in another view. We defined the connection in the breadboard view in schematic view, this is called a, a rat's nest line, just to show that those components are connected. And if I drag them around, you'll see that those connections um, update to sort of show the connections. Um, so what I do is I'll, um, I'll simply sort of lay them out so they look a bit neater. Um, so what I do if I rotate that 90 degrees um, like that, and if I rotate this resistor 90 degrees like that, um, and then what you can do is you can either manually drag to add a connection between components, which is the same as when we were dragging um, in the breadboard view. So that's added a connection there. Um, and I can add extra um, nodes on that line there. Or if you're happy with the rat's nest that's been suggested and you just want to insert that connection, you can double click on it. Uh, and Fritzing will... Um, insert that connection automatically so I've dragged that one out there a bit more and I'll drag this one down here so we now have the breadboard uh, image which is the one that we originally dragged the components on we've got the schematic image uh, which represents exactly the same thing uh, and you can see it's labeled the parts if we now look at the PCB okay we've basically got the same um, uh, kind of setup as we have with the schematic. So it's placed the components on the PCB for us and it's put these rat's nest connections to show how they're connected but it hasn't laid them out properly yet. So what we're going to do is to now do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is this grey square here, this is actually going to be the uh, dimensions of the printed PCB. So at the moment, um, you'll see it says that it's a rectangle, it's 84.7 millimetres wide and 56.4 millimetres high. Um, now you can print PCBs in lots of different shapes and dimensions and all sorts of things. Um, but if you want to make like a nice shield that's going to fit on top of an Arduino, it's nice to have it match the dimensions of the Arduino. Uh, unfortunately, Fritzing actually already... Um, knows the uh, dimensions of some common um, Arduino. So if I select Arduino shield here from the shape, what you'll see is that the uh, PCB changes to match the outline of the Arduino pin that's had. The other thing I'm going to do is actually I'm just going to make sure that lines up exactly by moving uh, the part to be at zero, zero. 
and then I'm also going to move the PCB to be at zero zero just to make sure that they are absolutely lined up on top of each other neatly. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is to move my components a little bit around and this is kind of where it becomes a bit of an art rather than a science in terms of how you squeeze your components on the board in such a way that um, they form a good circuit that's sort of well laid out and um, you know you don't get any interference between components I've kept this nice and simple by just having the two components here so it's going to be um, it's going to be fairly straightforward I think but even um, you know with relatively few components it can take a little bit of juggling to work out exactly how you're going to um, line the pieces out correctly so I think what I'm going to do for this one I'm going to rotate that one around 90 degrees like that and I'll put that kind of in the middle of the board let's say and then I'm going to rotate uh, this one round by 90 degrees as well and let's see what have we got here so we've got this is going to be the photo cell so uh, that ground wire there I'm pretty happy with so I'll double click to place that there and then I'm just going to straighten it out um, a bit I think just so it uh, looks a bit neater there we go so this is now going to when I print this PCB this is now going to be a copper trace on the board that is going to connect from that ground pin there uh, to this side of the um, LDR and then for my fixed resistor I'm going to now the problem is here okay so I've got these two lines crossing I've got a 5 volt line going to this side and I've got the uh, A0 pin going to this side and you don't want to have crossing over lines in your copper traces on your board so what I'm going to do is drag this one up and over the top instead uh, like that, that's fine. Uh, might move it that way a little bit just to. Um, there we go, connect those ones. And then this line here, um, I'm going to take that one down and that one down like that. Okay, so that uh, is a perfectly good um, PCB now that uh, has the same connections as on this schematic and on this breadboard. They're all the same thing. Um, I should just point out, there are cases as you add more and more components and this layout gets more complicated, trying to avoid copper traces uh, kind of crossing over each other. You'll see this option here that says um, layers. So you can, have a, you can have copper traces on the top of the board and on the bottom of the board. Um, and when you flick between top and bottom, you'll see that it kind of uh, hides the, um, or sort of shades out some of the traces so it's possible to have copper traces crossing over each other so long as one is on the top layer and one is on the bottom layer that's fine in this case I actually I didn't need to use that I can make them avoid each other still using only the single layer of the board um, but I just thought I'd point out that that's another way that you can do that so uh, one of the nice things about creating custom PCBs is obviously you can design them um, exactly as you want they're much more robust than um, other methods of doing it and, it, and it's nice also to be able to customize a little bit to sort of uh, you know take a little bit of pride in your work so one thing I always like to do is insert uh, what they call a silk screen image on the board as well so I'm just going to drag uh, this image here from the core parts onto my PCB and then I'm going to load an image file and I'm going to insert just a PNG file there. Oh, it's come out rather big. Um, let's just shrink that down a little bit. And just insert that in the corner of the board. Just a little bit of branding um, there, which I just think makes it a little bit more fun. And now you've got your uh, PCB layout complete. What we need to do is save that in a format that can be sent to a, a PCB production company. And the standard for that is something called a, a Gerber or a Gerber file. So we go to File, Export, uh, at Full Production, and then this bit here that says Extended Gerber file. Uh, we select the folder that we want to place it into, so that one's fine. And select that, and Fritzing will export it. And then if I show you what that's created, um, you'll see a, a handful of different files with um, GBS, GBO, GTO extensions. And what you want to do is to probably zip those all up into um, a single archive that you can upload to a uh, manufacturing company. 
Now, there's lots of different uh, manufacturing companies out there. I'm not um, going to uh, promote any particular one. Um, this is the one which I have used for this project. It's called PCBWay. Uh, they're based in China. Um, they're really very simple. Um, you can get a quote for how much it's going to cost to produce your PCB um, by um, uploading it, uploading that, that Gerber uh, zip file here. Um, and you sort of say, there's all these options here. There's like a ton of different options. I'll be totally honest. I just left them as absolutely the default to start with. Um, I don't even understand exactly what some of the differences would make to you. But for just a, a standard um, sort of shield that you're going to place on an Arduino, um, I would go with the same as what I did and, and um, uh, just go with the default. Uh, and you step through a, a couple of stages. Um, it will be checked by a person to make sure it's suitable for printing. You're going to get an email back to say yes or no, it's been accepted. Um, and then this literally, I think this cost me about $10 to print um, five copies. Um, and that's about it. Okay, so it's been a couple of weeks since I uh, clicked the purchase button and I've just had a package in the uh, mail which is always very exciting when you get uh, little parcels arrive from China for you. Uh, so I'm hoping this is going to be my uh, PCB board. So let's open it up and we'll have a look. And uh, what do we have inside? We've got, okay, pretty... Uh, neatly wrapped bubble wrap uh, okay so you can see inside uh, there hopefully um, these are my boards so I've got sort of a vacuum shrink wrapped little um, wrapper there and I can actually manage to get into it so what's in there okay so these look pretty cool actually uh, so I've got a bundle of identical um, printed uh, PCB card. So I'm just going to hold that up and hopefully that my um, camera will be nice and autofocus. There we go. Okay. So you see that is exactly the um, layout which we um, laid out in Fritzing. You can see the traces there that are going from the pins to the items. You can see the silk screening there and on the uh, reverse of the card nice and thin. And what I'm hoping is that I have um, an Arduino just lying around here fortunately. So here I have um, an Arduino Uno and when I take my newly printed board and line it on top like that um, you'll see I have a very nice um, fit on top there. So each of the pins of my shield are lining up with the pins of the Arduino. Now uh, it is worth noting, of course, that um, uh, this doesn't have the components uh, placed on it. Um, just in case you were expecting it to come as a ready-made board, what I have got is just the circuit board itself, and it's got the pins for where the components are going to be placed. So what I need to do is to take um, the two components that are used in this project. I've got the 10 kilo ohm resistor, and I've got the uh, LDR and insert those um, so I'll try and show you this up close you can see this again so I've got back to the uh, board again I'm going to insert the uh, LDR into those pins there and I'm going to insert my resistor uh, into the resistor pins there and then what I'm going to do is to solder those two components um, into position there which is what I'm going to do now They have on this side of the board the components. We've got uh, the LDR and the resistor, and you can see the copper traces. And on this side of the board, you can hopefully see that's the row of uh, pin headers, which means that um, now I can take uh, my Arduino and my newly uh, custom shield, and it will just slot neatly onto this row of pins here. Like that. That's kind of neat, isn't it?
Now, of course, the real test of our new shield is going to be in actually making sure that uh, we get it to run the code and produce the output that we want it to. So what I've got here is I've got the uh, Arduino IDE with my cover-up code, which is a, a puzzle I've shown in the past. I've uploaded it to the board. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to display the uh, serial monitor, uh, which is going to display the values that the uh, A0 analog pin is reading on the Arduino. Uh, so if we get the serial monitor up, uh, if you haven't used this tool before, it's, uh, it's a really useful, a uh, serial plotter, sorry, it's like the serial monitor, but instead of displaying a text value, it will show you a graph like that. So uh, what I'm hoping will happen is as I cover over the LDR with my hand, you'll see the uh, relative resistance rises of the LDR and you'll see the graph go up. If I take it away again, it'll drop down and I should be able to simulate quite a nice uh, little sort of pulse there. Um, so what we've got is we've got a custom shield completely uh, made to our requirements with a bit of branding as well and it's working um, exactly as we want it to as it would have done if we built it on a breadboard but it's that much more reliable. So there you go. Um, if you've got any questions about making custom PCBs or using fritzing or anything else that I've shown you please feel free to um, write a comment down below and I'll do my best to help. Um, if not thank you all very much for watching.